So my dad passed away when I was in high school of a heart attack. My uncle, my grandfather, um, all the men on my mom's side of the family had heart attacks as well. And so there's a uh, you know consistent pattern of pain and loss from health complications for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that has driven me to really not only want to take care of myself, like, hey, I don't want my kids to go through that, I don't want others to go through that, but it's something that has now become a really ability to turn that pain into a passion to help others. And so I see others on the street or other people that we talk to, and I'm like, hey, I don't want you to go through that. And so it's really kind of a, is a driving force for me of, hey, I don't want others to go through this, let's help them. Like, you need to know what I know now about right. health so that you don't go through the same things. So, like, we don't have to continue no. down the path that we might be on if it's not the path that we're not meant, no. if, if it's not the path that we're yeah. meant. You can change it now. To be on, right? Yeah. We can change it now. Hey everybody, I'm Eric Obremt and you're listening to Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. We talk about real shit, what's on our minds, and don't give a fuck if it makes you feel a little uncomfortable. So sit back, strap in, and get ready for some real shit. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Be Authentic or get the fuck out. I'm your host, Eric Obremt. Uh, we are here today. I'm super excited about this episode. We're going to be interviewing who is now a friend of mine, Cole Taylor. Cole, thanks for being here. It's man. good to be here. Hey, it's gonna be a fun I time. Appreciate you. Like, this is super exciting. You know, we've had two conversations previously um, on other podcasts that we filmed here yeah. about how we did the starting line games here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're in this hot ass fucking gym. <laughs> Sweating filming, already. But I was like, this is the best backdrop yeah. that we could find, right? Um, Cole, you and I met, what, two years ago? Two and a half years yep. ago, something like Roof that? Con. Yep. At, was it? Yeah, it was at RoofCon. Roof and then got to know each other a little bit better at the Commercial Roofing yep. Academy and uh, got to got to talk. And, and it's funny because you do fitness coaching and right. nutrition and all that kind of stuff. and. I always watched you a little bit from afar of like what you did and uh, had some changes in my life with who we were working with sure. and all that kind of stuff. And, and an opportunity arose for us to be able to do something together. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, we have been like overjoyed and like happy I with it. how it turned out. Um, because there, there were things that I was skeptical, there were things that I was skeptical about, um, you know, and you've gotten to know me well enough that yeah. like, I will fucking tell you. <laughs> you will shoot straight. Yeah. I will absolutely I fucking tell you. Let's yeah, talk about yeah. it. Yeah, and like, you're gonna hear. Yeah. Uh, but like, my wife and I are doing it together. Yeah. And uh, we've both had, we've both had really good results and like, I love it. Um, have changed our, uh, we lived healthy yeah. before, right? Um, but just getting the dialed in, right? Because something that you talk about a lot is tracking, mm -hmm. right? Tracking and da stat yeah, data, data, yeah. data. Great and, data equals great decisions, yeah. Yeah, so tell everybody a little bit, I'm terrible at fucking introducing people, <laughs> but tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do, and then yeah. we'll dig into some other Yeah, bullshit. I love it. So, name's Cole Taylor. I run a company called The Starting Line that basically integrates functional medicine with fitness. That's coaching. your camera. That's so my camera. Yeah, yeah. Boom, I'm just the choo-choo train yeah, in the choo -choo background. Choo-choo train in the background. I don't know if they can hear it, but yeah. it's yeah. really cheering me on over here. Uh, so functional medicine meets fitness coach. And the idea is we want to get as much data as possible. So hormones, uh, nutrient deficiencies, metabolic health, gut health. And we say, this is the data we use to make decisions. And then from there, there's a team of doctors, dietitians, and trainers that say, hey, with our unique perspectives, we're going to collaborate on that data and put together a full customized protocol for And that clients. new team you put together for that, let Badass. me tell you, is, is really fucking good. Yeah. Like they're really good. Like they're so much smarter than all of us. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I have, we've helped 50,000 people over the last 10 years and I'm very educated on, you know, the personal training side and the nutrition and they have totally flip-flopped my understanding of a lot of things yeah nutrition they're fitness. really fucking good very smart yeah and, you know so it's a very high level trained functional medicine team it's di uh, dietitians and nutritionists and trainers that even the trainers that we're hiring are much more experienced than me like one of our new guys was a strength coach for the chiefs for years oh really like, yeah not the head guy but one of the assistants yeah yeah, yeah. super smart like in his mid-50s like where i'm like why did you want to work with us and he was like i just love what you guys do and believe in it and i'm passionate about your mission and i'm like it's great um, and so, you know, we we get to help a lot of people not just lose weight and gain muscle, but more importantly, have energy, be around for a yeah. lot longer, fix the, instead of just painting the outside of the Ferrari, like actually fixing the engine. Right. Uh, so most of my time is focused on us getting clients for that, 
I also do some other consulting and mindset and you know corporate coaching on both the personal development side, but also systems and processes. Yeah, I travel and speak a lot, but most of our time is spent is how do we get as many people as healthy as when possible. When did you start the starting line? The starting line as the actual brand started about three years ago, okay. uh, but both me and my business partner, Aaron, which you know super well. Yeah, which who couldn't <laughs> fucking make the time to be here today. He probably won't watch the episode either, but if you do, Aaron, <laughs> see that? That's for not showing up and you just couldn't find the time. Everybody else could find the time, but you're so goddamn busy that you couldn't make the time to come here for 30 minutes. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he has like 17 client calls a day. Of we will isolate that clip and send it right. To yeah, him. Lexi, 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 isolate that clip just send so that we can send it to Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he's probably literally when I left, he was on a call with a group of clients. So that's, fine. that's, you know, the benefit of me being the face of the business and him being the actual COO as he spends all day client calls on right. all day doing this kind of stuff. Right. Um, but, uh, we both had been doing coaching for, you know, him longer than me. He was like 10, 11 years. Oh, okay. Like first people to get an online coaching. Okay. That's why he has over a million followers on Instagram. Like just had that oh. for a long time. Uh, I was up until four years ago was a pastor at a church and I started to get into coaching kind of on the side. Yeah. Um, and so then, you know, three years ago we said, Hey, what's it look like for us to do what you're doing on you know, the high volume fitness coaching with, you know, I can bring a lot of my knowledge and expertise and actually help people at a more intimate level. And yeah. Now, three years ago is when we kicked things off and things have nice. set rocket ships since then. So tell me, tell me about that. I, I love digging into shit that I don't understand. Yep. You know what I don't understand? What's that? Being a fucking pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. that's hard to believe for sure. everybody. I'm shocked. I thought you were the most knowledgeable about Right. It. I'm not. Um, I, but I love learning. Sure. I really do. Like, I mean, it's something that we talk about a lot. Like, part of the team method that I teach mm -hmm. and coach is, is uh, the E is empathy. Sure. Right? And and trying to just understand other people's, yeah. whether it's points of view or how they live, background, yeah. background, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But, like, not necessarily judging it, but, like, understanding it. Sure. And being able to, like, go sit on the other side of the table and, like, listen. Mm -hmm. I love opportunities like these episodes to do that, yeah. right? I love having people on that lived a life that has nothing yeah. to do with mine, right? Such a cool learning experience, yeah. Yeah, and understand like where that came from. So like, tell me about that and like how that came about mm. and, and, and how then you eventually you kind of, sure. you know, move away it off. From it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some of it was just, the way, yeah, but pivoted, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll explain kind of where I still see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. very similar, just different, yeah. you know, allocation of time in a different platform. But um, yeah, so the earliest piece of me wanting to be a pastor was kind of integrated in my upbringing. So my, you know, what's technically my stepmom, which I, I don't look at as any different because I lost my mom at a you know, very young age before I really would be able to comprehend that. Uh, she had pastored a church. Uh, my sister and her husband, they pastored a church in Kansas City. And so I, I grew up very much in this environment of you know, pastors or former pastors. They're very heavily involved in the church. And so my, my life was kind of prototypical you know, church kid or pastor's kid where every single night of the week I'm up at the church for something. Mm -hmm. uh, went to a Christian private school. Uh, and so for me, that was kind of ingrained in me, but also like as being a very driven the person that wants to make an impact, wants to be seen, wants to be liked. The people that I looked up to the most were the people on stage that I'm seeing every night. It's like, how do I, how do I be like those guys? Uh, but I also saw the, the impact they were making and I would see the, the life change in people. And so for me, that was a kind of a natural progression of once I finished my business degree and finished um, playing football, it was like, well, this is kind of what I've been ingrained to do my right. life. And so I stepped into it. And I loved it. Honestly, there's so many good, good things about it of the leadership abilities that I learned, the uh, ability to sell a vision and to help people and make an impact. I did it like, however, you know, there's certain things where I just didn't get to talk about. And like I wanted to talk about more practical things of instead of just saying, like, I'd love to pray for you. It's like, right. You're, you're, you're still work too. Like trash. Right, right, right. Yeah. Pray about it. Like, right. God's already told you what to do. When, right. Like there's nothing to read in the Bible. Like, just go eat, right. eat a normal meal or go get some sleep. That's why you're tired or take your wife on a date. That's why your relationship's struggling. So some of those, like I found those tensions. And then for me too, like making $30,000 a year, not super fun, not having really any upward mobility. Uh, there's only so much you can do as a like driven person who wants to build something. So I started on the side saying like, I'm going to keep doing this, make an impact, but I'm also going to start doing sales and coaching. And I, that's actually got connected with Aaron as I started doing sales and coaching for him. Oh, okay. His original business. And I was like, oh my gosh, this model's great. Like I can really help people. Yeah. Know that it's flexible. Uh, and not be poor. And not be poor. Like I, I, I think like one of the first couple weeks is like, oh my gosh, I just made 
this week about as much as I make in like three months and as a pastor. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And you know, then things started to snowball and it grows and grows and yeah. dude, I, I can do this. And so I got to a place of like, man, like I, I think there's more here and I want to build something. And so I went back and got my MBA. Uh, I started doing my coaching, you know, much more hands-on. It was one-on-one kind of life, personal development. So we're basically pastoring people one-on-one, but also the fitness side. And then that took off quickly. And me and Aaron ended up kind of partnering. And yeah. that was where things went. But I still look at what I knew as just pastoring outside the church. Like, yeah. really to have conversations with people. A lot of the times I'll go speak and I'll share my faith. Or I'll get to pray for people that are really struggling with things or yeah. speaking to their lives. Uh, and so it's kind of... You know, Tony says it all the time too. Is like this that platform was just preparation for this one. Like, yeah. I'm still a pastor, it just looks different now. Yeah, it's kind of like sports, exactly. Yeah. Too right. I mean, I think that my employees get fucking probably super tired of me doing it. But like every business lesson or every business thing that you can teach mm-hmm. all comes back from something else. And whether it's that for you or like for me, it's sports. Like mm-hmm. everything is ingrained yeah. into a sports mentality of like me being a lineman, right? Like I grew up, I played center. Yeah. So I had to know what every fucking person on oh, that line, line yeah. was doing and where they were going and who they were blocking. Mm-hmm. And if we had to make an adjustment, we I had to be the one yeah. that had to make the call to make the adjustment, who's getting the backer, yeah. who's going this way, who's who's coming down, who's kicking out, yeah. who's doing all that. And, and then the next step of that is the little things and the nuances, right? It's details. Did I take a step the right way? Mm-hmm. Did I miss that? Yeah. Did, did, did I step right? Or did, Timing did, did and I step with a left foot and I should have stepped with a right mm-hmm. foot? Because I can't I can't catch that guy if I take a left step, mm-hmm. I have to take a right step. Yeah. And in business it's the exact same, same thing. thing, right? Like if I'm not dialing into those little fucking details yeah. and I'm not worrying about it, am I taking that right step correctly? Yeah. Right. You remember those practices and watch the light like it's all it's all it, step. Yeah. Step. It's like, motherfucker, I know how to step, right? Like, I get it. But it's step, step. But if we don't do that in life, and we don't do that in business as well, Mm -hmm. we don't get the payoff at the end. We don't get the win at at the end, right? And it's the same thing with nutrition, Yeah. right? It's every day we have to go step, 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 Mm -hmm. step. Because if we don't, then all of a sudden, three weeks goes by, and it's like, well, I'm still eating fucking chips Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. I mean, we would do... Is it playing college football too? Like I, I think when I first got into college, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be amazing. Like we don't have to do the basic stuff anymore. Like we need to learn all this high level stuff. Like one of the first practices, the first 30 minutes we spent doing stances and starts. I played receiver and I'm like, oh, I've been running off the line since I was a child. What do you right. mean? And they would like make you stay in the stands and like take your first step and then get in the back of the line. And I'm like, are we really doing this? And there's the the reiteration of right. fundamentals. Like those that are great don't dramatically do different things. They no. do the fundamentals better. Way same, better. same thing in business. Yeah, it's, it's like, all fundamentals. You can do the fundamentals the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honest. It's yeah. all like you can go do all the fun stuff and the one handed catches and all that bullshit. Yeah. But you don't even get to the one handed yeah. catch it's unless you've got the step yeah. down and exactly. you've got that that nuance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, down. So yeah, I don't know. I'm really passionate yeah. about that. Like, well, it's the same thing. Like all of those things. You know, you said transferable skills and knowledge. Like mm-hmm. for me, f- football was a big teaching lesson for all things in business, but the church stuff too is mm-hmm. like, I, honestly, I, I know a lot of pastors or former pastors that are extremely successful in business because when you can learn to cast an intangible vision of like this, you know, jokingly, but this guy in the sky, that's going to totally change your life. Like when you can sell that to people, like you can sell anything. I've always that's said I want vision. door knockers that were missionaries. Cause Seriously. I'm like, dude, if you can sell Jesus <laughs> at a fucking door, like, I bet you anything. can sell a roof. Right. Yeah. Well, even to the, you think about like now running a business, if I have a vision, like I'm going to take some money and I'm going to go hire talent for this and I'm going to build a team to go do this. Whereas right. a church, it's like, who can I get to volunteer their time with no right. to do this thing? And right. so it's like, if I can get a team of people to volunteer their time and not get paid all because they believe in the vision, it's like once you put together a team with money, it's like, it's no brainer. It's totally going to different. the vision and all I can throw some money behind it, it's way easier than. So all of those skills are transferable. If I'm casting a vision, I'm selling something every week, every conversation I'm having, I'm selling something. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm just changing my product, but I'm doing all the same things. Right. So out of everything that you do, whether it's the speaking or it's the coaching or it's the business or whatever yeah. it is, like what is it that fills your bucket the most? Man, so I, I would love to tell you that it's like one-on-one conversations with clients and really being able to pour into them. I've just honestly found that I 
enjoy community and group more than I do. Yeah. And so the thing, like Aaron is such a, a one-on-one person. That's all he wants to do. He doesn't love speaking or being in front of people or groups. I just found that like I get lit up the most when I'm in front of groups of people and yeah. inspire and bring energy. And so yeah. speaking in front of people is the, I love the that biggest too. thing that lights me up. Like yeah. I love pouring into people one-on-one. Yeah. But I, yeah. I feel like coming away from it, there's so much more impact that's made. It's like, I just spoke into, you know, 500 lives versus right. one. And yeah. Not that that's one's better than the other. You can go way deeper with one. I just, I think I'm more wired towards inspiration and yeah. motivating people where some people are more wired into like, let's get into the details of your life. Yeah. That's why I lo- like, honestly, I love the one-on-one stuff at the church too. But what I really got lit up by was the services, the big events, the conferences is like, here's an opportunity to gather people and yeah. really inspire people with a group think or energy or mastermind style yeah. versus just like me having a one on conversation. You've got a you've got a very interesting story of kind of your pivot moment when nutrition and health and, and mm-hmm. fitness and everything like kind of uh, became more of a priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. T- tell the people a little bit about that. I don't I don't want to butcher the sure. story. So yeah, so you know, usually when I'm speaking or talking and explaining my passion for fitness, I'm like, it may seem like it's because I've played sports and I right. love those things and I want to look good and all of those are factors, but more of it's driven from pain and loss. Yeah. And so I mentioned earlier that I, you know, grew up with my stepmom. Uh, that's because I lost my mom of birth complications at a young age. But even more than that is I've lost every single other birth related person to me except an uncle for other health related complications. So my dad passed away when I was in high school of a heart attack, my uncle, my grandfather, um, all the men on my mom's side of the family had heart attacks as well. And so there's a, uh, you know, a consistent pattern of pain and loss from health complications for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that has driven me to really not only want to take care of myself, like, Hey, I don't want my kids to go through that. I don't want others to go through that, but it's something that has now become a really ability to turn that pain into a passion to help others. And so I see others on the street or other people that we talk to, and I'm like, hey, I don't want you to go through that. And so it's really kind of a, it's a driving force for me of, hey, I don't want others to go through this. Let's help them. Like, you need to know what I know now about right. health so that you don't go through the same things. Because everything is based, I, I, I feel like every change that anybody makes in their life always revolves around some kind of pain. 100%. Or trauma, right? Yeah. And it's not only this, I, I talked about this on another episode, but like change is based in pain and trauma. Mm-hmm. And so is connection. Yeah. Right. 100%. And, 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 and I, I mentioned this uh, on another show, but like us being here when we did the games, like, yeah. Yeah, when we did the games, you know, like I didn't know anybody. Right. Right. And I'm not good in <laughs> rooms that I don't know anybody. Right. Like yeah. it's not, that's not my genius. Right. I'm not super good at that, but to spend time with people puking mm-hmm. outside the fucking door and doing those goddamn uh-huh. prowler pushes <laughs> and you know, the shit that we did that was yeah. so hard. Mm-hmm. Right. But we did it together. It together, but it brings you together. Right. You mm-hmm. bond in sports yeah. or guys that are in the military, yeah. you know, like, you know, you, 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 you bond over blood yeah. and sweat and tears yep. and crying and mm-hmm. fucking, you know, going through shit like that. Yeah. But it also is how you make a change. Totally. And, and, and a lot of times you won't make change until the pain mm-hmm. is great enough right. to make you make the change. And I, I, what my hope is, is that for us doing shows like this and doing episodes like this and talking about it is telling people like the pain doesn't have to be that great no. for you to make the change, yeah. right? Don't wait. I wish that I wouldn't have had to go through what I went through to stop mm-hmm. drinking yeah. and the pain that not only I went through, but everybody around me went totally. through. I wish that I wouldn't have had to have yeah. hit my head against the wall so many times and went to jail and did all the bullshit that I did to be able to have that light bulb go yeah. off, right? You have the ability for the light bulb to go off yeah. earlier. Choose it. Right? There's so many people out there that are willing to help. Yeah. And if you have any type of inclination that there's something that you need to do better at so that you right. can live longer and be with your people. Yeah. Right? Because that's something I post about every Sunday, uh-huh. right? Is, Ice cream. Is, is spending time with your people, uh-huh. right? And are you being intentional about that time, yeah. right? One of the reasons that I do everything that I do, whether it's eating well or working out or business or work, whatever it is, is so that I am here for as long as humanly possible to be there for her yep. and to watch her grow into the human yeah. that she's supposed to grow into. And mm-hmm. if I don't do those things, yeah. then all of a sudden she has the same story that you have. Yep. 
right? Where, man, I love my dad and he was amazing, but he just didn't take care of himself very well. Mm -hmm. And he fizzled out and we didn't yeah. get to play sports together and mm -hmm. we didn't get to, I don't, I don't get to have all those memories that you get to have, right. really, that you had with your dad. I don't get to have those memories. And yeah. like, there's nothing that would make me sadder uh -uh. than her not getting to have those memories with yeah. me and her mom. Well, I think that's the secret that you just explained is instead of waiting or a phrase I use all the time is like, wake up before your wake up call. Like, right. Until like, instead of waiting for the heart attack to happen, how about we change now? But yeah. like, I just don't feel enough pain to do that. Maybe they don't want to fix their roof until it leaks. Yeah. hundred percent. They wait until it hurts bad enough. But I think the secret to accelerating that pain for yourself is doing what you need and looking in the future is, is what happens if I don't change. Right. Like what would it look like if I died early and yeah. like, left my daughter with no one? Like to me, that's the way to have the pain happen now instead of wait for the heart attack. Like, yeah. Like what happens if the heart attack happens? Right. So you put yourself in that pain position now so I don't yeah. have to actually do it. And then you're like, okay, well let's let's not allow it to get there and right. make, make a change now. It reminds me of the exercise that we did on one of Hunter's yep. retreats where he takes us into a cemetery and we all have to write our obituary mm -hmm. from the perspective of another person. Yeah, eulogy exercise is great. Dude, like, fuck. I weep my eyes out. <laughs> right? I actually took my company to my grandfather's grave. Wow. And did it there because I wanted them to all meet sure. him, quote yeah. unquote, meet him, and then go around and find, you know, their own tombstones or whatever to yeah. sit by and do the exercise. And like, I had grown men inside of my company sit there and start crying mm -hmm. as they as they did that exercise right. and it's like we don't have to continue no. down the path that we might be on if it's not the path that we're not meant oh. if if it's not the path that we're yeah. meant you can change it now to be on right yeah. we can change it now like and uh, it, it drives me crazy like it, it goes back to recovery right uh -huh. and guys will come in the rooms and not do like we have this simple program mm -hmm to be able to change your life, right? Yep. And then they don't do it. And you want to fucking grab them. And you want to shake them just and be like, it. if you it'll just work. fucking do this, yeah. it'll work. You don't want to be this way anymore. Same thing with our health clients. Yeah, so <laughs> shut the fuck up and listen and just do this. Uh -huh. The problem is, is that we can't do it for them. No. And that's the hardest part because you want you pour into these people, especially in coaching, right? Yeah. Is that you pour into these people, then they don't do it. And then sometimes what do they do? They, they blame, come back yeah. and then they blame you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, uh, man, okay. I told you yeah. what to try. Sure. And you chose you didn't do it. to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't blame me. But like that lives with you too, it does. Though, right? Like that that's a hard thing. I mean, it's, it's a lot to carry. And I think it, it was up until recently that I carried that really heavily. Yeah. Both from being a pastor of like people losing their lives and I wasn't there to help for it or I you know, didn't give them enough or maybe they leave the church. Like that's something that weighed on me a lot, but especially getting into the health stuff is like seeing someone work with us and like try to quit earlier. They didn't lose weight. They, even though we're giving them the exact same program and yep. steps to the process that someone else that lost a hundred pounds, you know, I still carry the weight of like, ah, maybe I should have done more. Right. But I think there's a mental shift that's happened to me is like, I can't be a tugboat or I can't be a lifeguard and actually in the water to pull right. out anymore. Right. I've just got to be a lighthouse because yeah. if not, I'll get pulled under and I'll drown too. Yes. I can't save everyone. Like, yeah. I've got to actually make the choice to but do man, it. But man, you fucking want to, you don't sure you? I want to. Yeah. But it's also like, it became exhausting for me and you get burnt out of like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like, you get so down on yourself of you know, the, the one person out of 500 that's not doing it, you take that personally and yeah. beat your head against the wall. And on the, recovery, on the recovery side, it's really hard too, because like we have people that come through Roofers in Recovery that do really well for mm -hmm. a couple of months, and then all of a sudden we literally get a phone call. They relapse. That they, well, that they OD'd mm -hmm. and, and they're dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that hurts, because so then you sit rough. there and you're like, should I have called them one more time? Mm -hmm. Or should I have done this? Should yeah. I have done that? And it's like, Dude, you can't. You can't play that game. No, yeah. but like, but you do for a minute. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, know. you can play that same game, like for me with like losing my dad. I'm like, yeah. man, if I can just maybe push harder to get him right. to be better. And right. I just, you just don't know what you don't know. You know. Like, it's not your fault. It was their yeah. choices that got him there. That's yeah. not to knock on him. Like, he, right. you know, there's some things that happened genetically that he didn't know yeah. about either. But at the same time, it's, you know, you can look at any situation and be like, ah, oh, I could have saved them. Yeah. But it's not our responsibility. There's so many opportunities out there now to to understand exactly where you are as well like you said with the sure. testing and all that kind of stuff right. like you don't have to not know no anymore right i mean when i went and did the fucking blood panel for these sure. you fucks that you know do what you do you know right. now like they brought out like 97 vials uh -huh. and i was like dude am i gonna have to stay here for a while like <laughs> am i gonna be able to drive after that but like yeah. the point is like how thorough very it is 
and and the information and the data that you can learn from yeah. it is so important and i challenge anybody that's watching or listening that like has an inclination of like man i could do better sure is take the time to to get that testing done mm -hmm. to find out how your body reacts to foods yeah. to you know all that kind of different stuff um i was so upset when i got my food list and i was like fuck i love tomatoes it's all the stuff i love i love yeah. to like even good stuff right yeah. like i can't eat broccoli right. i was like that's the only fucking the only vegetable, vegetable i like, I like. <laughs> yeah I'm like what the fuck's the only thing that doesn't sure. suck right mm -hmm. brussels sprouts i love brussels sprouts right. can't fucking eat them yeah. um but now that I know that I don't, sure. and all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, now I don't feel bloated yeah, all the so time. Better. I don't feel gassy all the time. I don't feel whatever. Mm -hmm. And so if, 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 if that's something that interests you and you wanna be better at it, take the time to reach out to somebody, even sure. if it's not cold, like yeah. reach out to somebody to to get that done, right? Uh, because it's just so important. It's so important. I think we, especially if you're a business owner listening to this, which yeah. I'm guessing a lot of people yep. are, is you get so caught up in this mindset of like, I will focus on my health once I get some more free time and once my business gets to the place that it is. Right. But that that's a never ending game. Like you let's say you fully remove yourself from your business, you exit, there's always like the next thing you're moving yep. towards and a never free time. No. And so I always ask people like, instead of your body being an anchor that you had to like drag the whole time until you hopefully get enough time available. Right. Like what it would look like if it was a weapon that's actually accelerating all of that. That's what I've learned too, because I've been in the same place yep. where I've been very overweight, even though I was very educated and right. training people, like I've gained a ton of weight and realized like, oh, I'll get there eventually. But it one, it never would happen. Two, it was dragging me down. My yep. efficiency, my energy, my you know productivity, the way I could lead people. And so once I shifted that perspective, it was like, what if I just filled my cup full? That way it's way easier to give out. It's accelerated everything else. Like yeah. the efficiency of time that you have of Man, if bringing the best version of me to one conversation, like 10X multiplies the ability of that conversation to go somewhere, or yeah. the sales conversation, the yep. presentation, like yep. it's back to being a lighthouse. Like if I can be a lighthouse, like draws things to me versus yep. like, oh, I'm dragging this body around and I, I can do it anyways. Like don't do it despite of your health, do it because your health is where it needs to be. Absolutely. So the way that we always kind of wrap up things is I always know that like I forgot something or we didn't dig into something that we wanted sure. to. And I want to make sure that whatever was on your mind coming in sure. uh, that the audience is left with. So yeah. I always give the floor back to the guests for the last few minutes to um, either expand on something or just make sure that you leave them with the thing that you want to make sure that they know about. Totally. I, I would say that the biggest lesson I like leaving people outside of what we've talked about of the testing of like, hey, if you haven't got testing for your health, like please do yeah maybe you're not like my dad who like it would have saved his life because of some sort of genetic thing maybe you just are missing a lot of potential for yourself because of energy levels yep. or you know your sleep or what your body looks and feels like like there's so much left for you to be able to tap into on in your body and your health if you can just get the data to make decisions and we're happy to help with that there's plenty of other people who can do it yeah uh, outside of that the other thing i love leaving with people is just the identity piece like if you're truly wanting to change whether it's your health whether it's your business growth it's a personal thing it can't just be a setting a goal and taking action. Like there's got to be internal conversation that happens of why do I do what I do? And it's because of how I see myself. Uh, the phrase I use all the time is you do what you do because of what you think of you. Mm -hmm. So my identity, how I see myself is what's really gonna shape my actions over time. And so challenge for you listening to this is, you know, maybe you're hearing this, you're like, I'm gonna get my health on track. I'm ready. Like I'm gonna take some action. I'm gonna start tracking my food and being consistent. Like I would have you pause and first ask, Instead of what do I need to do is who do I need to become? Like, how do I start believing I'm a healthy person first? Right. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get 90 days in or 75 hard or whatever it is you've decided to do. Yep. You may have got great results, but it's not going to last. That's why people yo-yo so much is they don't actually yeah. fix this stuff. Yep. So challenge for you is as you're considering all of this, and maybe it's business growth or some other growth you need, is pause and ask myself is like, how do I actually begin to believe I'm a healthy person? Or how do I believe I'm a good business owner? How do I rewire these mental thoughts? Because there's a reason you're in the position you're in. And it's not just laziness. Right. There's a, an internal programming that's gotten you there. And so you have to be able to address that thing first. Because yeah. again, your identity shapes your actions, your actions shape your results. So if you don't go, me do have, if I don't go to me yeah. first, then I'm never gonna get the long-term have that I yeah. want. So fix the identity first, ask myself, why do I do what I do? Why do I think this way about myself? Because if you change that, that unlocks everything. And else. it can be as easy as saying it every day. Yeah. Right? Reprogramming like, your mind. Yeah, words. reprogramming yeah. your brain of like, I am an athlete. I yeah. am I am a healthy eater. Mm -hmm. I am whatever. Like do yeah. that every single day to rewire mm -hmm 
how you operate and like it can change that. It's so it, it's so cool because once you start to say that and you yep. see it and you believe that is now every decision you make is a vote for that person. Like yes. you talk about it, every action I take is a vote for the person I'm becoming. Yep. So it's like if I'm a healthy person, what should I do? Well, if this food comes out, I'm probably choosing the healthy option because that's who I am. Right. Instead of when I'm trying to quit smoking, I'm not a smoker. Oh, right. You know, there's this mental shift of an identity here, or maybe I shouldn't move my body because I'm an athlete. We're right. Like, oh, I don't want to work out, but I guess I will. I guess I have to. I believe I'm healthy and I'm an athlete. I do it just because it's just what I, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Cole, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for taking me on the workout this morning. Yes, that was a riot. I love that place. I'm going to come back just so we can go back there again. Love it. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Oh, I always forget. I got to do this at the end. We don't have any sponsors, so we want to get Zen. So, Zen, <laughs> for all your nicotine needs, delicious flavors. My favorite, cinnamon and citrus. Love it when I get a cinnamon in here and I mix them up and I don't know what I'm going to get. And it's just like, oh, it's just like it's a box of chocolates, right? It. It's just it's Christmas every day. So Zen. Speaking of health, Zen <laughs> for all your nicotine needs. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Cole, for being here. Thanks for setting this up. Um, excited about tonight. Hanging out a little bit more. Everybody, no sponsors. Fucking share this shit. Get it out to the world. If you gained anything from this, if you gained any value, if you learned anything, take the time. Tell your friends about this. That's the cost of admission. I appreciate you all. Appreciate you all listening. And remember, everybody, be authentic. Or get the fuck out. Be authentic. Get the fuck out if you can't be authentic. Get the fuck out if you can't be authentic.